How's it going everybody? This video is going to be about the LG G3 and basically going to try and cover everything you need to know about gaming on it as well as everything about dimming, where and when and how it dims, things like that. So it's going to be a little bit longer than what I try to typically do for videos but there is a lot to cover here. I'm going to start out with some charts and measurements just to give some context to the gaming situation. Uh, and then we'll break into dimming with non-gaming content and then how to set up game mode and stuff and do everything step by step. So starting out on the top we have filmmaker or any of the movie modes and the bottom is game mode. This is an SDR. So in SDR the modes that are not game mode that allow you to change the peak brightness setting can get over 600 nits but they have more ABL, which a lot of people don't understand. ABL is not a dimming over time. It's just when the scene gets very, very bright, it's just going to be reducing its maximum brightness. So you can see the bigger area of the screen that's bright, it drops more. Whereas in game mode, because peak brightness is not adjustable, it's at 320 nits, but with very little ABL where only the full field measurement drops, and this is a huge upgrade over the previous models. But now if we look at HDR, what you might see from other reviewers is around a 100 nit drop in game mode compared to the movie modes. And if I switch it over now to Dolby Vision, you also see a little bit of a drop there as well. However, this is just in windowed measurements and adds more to why I say I don't like windowed measurements for real content. In real content, they're the same around 1400 to 1450 nits. So don't worry about seeing lower window measurements in game mode from other reviewers. In this chart, you can see how it's measured over time, staying around 1400 nits with only a couple little drops in higher APL with the game mode. But overall, they're very consistent. All right, so next we're gonna look at the HDR game mode grayscale and EOTF tracking. So with the dynamic tone mapping setting turned to off, you can see it follows EOTF pretty well, just a slight bump at the bottom. If we turn HGIG on, this year it actually seems to overtrack just a tiny bit towards the bottom, whereas last year it came out of the box under tracking. Now if you turn dynamic tone mapping to on, then you see a bigger bump on the upper end, and it also adjusts the way tone mapping works. And then with dynamic tone mapping on, if you want to make it brighter, you can turn on the expression brightness setting to really bump up the EOTF more and make it noticeably brighter. And then Dolby Vision game mode is still the same as Dolby Vision Cinema Home, which is way over brightened. And so very inaccurate out of the box. This chart is for Cinema Home. And again, you can see very over brightened. And then if we switch to Dolby Vision Cinema, you see it tracks EOTF very well. So I would not recommend using Dolby Vision Gaming unless you have it calibrated first. All right, now let's start looking at dimming and where, when, and how it dims. I'm going to start with just video content on sports here. So this is pretty consistent, this scene right here, where it's very bright in the background and it's not moving and it's just someone talking. But there are some elements while they're moving, they're still staying roughly in the same spot. This is in... SDR with the brightness maxed out, so over 600 nits. So after letting this play for over 8 minutes, what you're going to see on the top is I hit the home button and then switch back. So if it had dimmed, then you would be able to see it here. And it looks like there may be a very, very small amount. Looking at the white background and the microphone in the hand, it looks like maybe a 5 at most 10% drop after a fairly consistent image on screen. So while the TPC dimming or the ASBL dimming was addressed in the firmware update, GSR is still enabled in the service menu. And while there is a way to disable it, I have not. So this is showing for the average person that there is going to be a very, very slight, slight drop, but nothing that you're visually going to see. And without the side by side, you would never notice. But that was outside of game mode, so now let's check in gaming. But before doing so, I just want to go through setup, settings, and some other things that I've discovered with gaming. And we're going to do this on the Xbox Series X, though this will apply to other platforms like the PS5 and so on. You can see we got all green check marks. However, I do disable the Dolby Vision Gaming, as I said earlier. And if we go into the HDR game calibration, now what I like to do is go into the TV settings first and see where everything is. So when you first hit it, you're going to get the uh, game bar coming up. And I'm going to go to all settings, and we're going to go through them all. And there's quite a few things here that are a little bit different. Starting out with, you see a lot of these settings are grayed out that in the past were not. We can see the new expression enhancer setting, and even under color, that is now grayed out. 
but I will show you how to fix or get around that. And then when we go to clarity right now, you can see super resolution is there, but that's it. But don't worry, you can still use the BFI and I'll show you that in a moment. But I do wanna back up and make sure that aspect ratio is on original, not 16 by nine, though that's not too big of an issue with modern consoles. Just scan is on and grayed out. And if we go down to general and go to AI service, in HDR, we can see that it's fine with the AI brightness disabled. However, I'll show you in a bit where with SDR, it's actually on by default. So now we're gonna go into the actual game optimizer. And then if we go down to input delay, if you enable the boost mode, that only works at 60 hertz anyway, and it can change the gamma. So I like to leave that on standard. And then we're gonna turn on the FreeSync Premium for the Xbox, you can see ALLM and VRR G-Sync is still on. And so because I use a receiver, I have it all on for different devices. However, I have tested the Xbox both through the receiver and direct to the TV. Here's the menu color option where you can change the color of the game optimizer. But now I wanna show you something interesting. If we go back to the top, you may know from previous years under the game genre, you would have different options, RTS, FPS, whatever. While I would never use them personally for a accurate setup, I know a lot of people like that. That is grayed out. I could not find a way to get that to work at all. But now if we go down here through the rest of the picture options, you see there's a lot of different picture options that you can adjust. And then here, if you are on PC, you can set it to 21 by nine or 32 by nine. And when doing so, you would get the screen position option in order to move it up, down, or put it in the middle. And then when you're at the bottom of that game bar menu, you can just click that advanced settings to go back to your regular advanced settings. Now on the Xbox, we're gonna set up the HJG. If you pull both triggers, both bumpers at the same time, it will pull up a menu in the top right telling you what the values are. So looking at the first screen with HGIG, it does clip at 1500 nits. Now, if you remember earlier, I showed in windowed measurements, it was in the upper 1200s, but in the real content test, it was going upwards of 1450. So 1500 is about where the TV actually can do, maybe just a little bit over, and then that's where calibration, you could make it even more accurate than using HGIG by fine tuning the tone mapping to the display's actual capability. But now while we're here at this menu, I wanted to see if this expression enhancer would affect the tone mapping at all, and it does not. It does change the brightness of the display, however, it's still clipping at 1500, and it changes the brightness by manipulating the EOTF, and I will have more about this setting in a future video. But now if we go to dynamic tone mapping and you turn it to off, then the TV will rely on its factory roll-off, so it will tone map. However, this is the setting that would be changed with a calibration and being able to upload your own tone mapping settings. And then if we go to dynamic tone mapping, again, it's going to keep tone mapping and it's not gonna clip. And so you could drag the slider all the way up and it's gonna still just be tone mapping it. But for right now, we're gonna put it back to HGIG without calibration, that's where it should be. And if you're on a PS5, you would go all the way to the bottom on the white screens and then go up 18 clicks and that puts you around 1500. So now when I switch over to this screen, you can see in the center where there actually is image retention, which was a little bit surprising considering the heat sink. Uh, you can see where it's brighter in the middle from having that first pattern on the screen for even just you know a minute or so. Or to rephrase that better, it's the amount of time it took for that image retention to go away that was surprising. Because I mean, even going through here and going back to this menu here, you see that glow in the center. Whereas on the G2, for example, I never noticed that. All right, so moving on, setting up the Xbox dashboard is in SDR. Now, because you are in not in a game and ALLM is on, it would be in one of the movie modes. I'm gonna switch this over to game mode and we can see that these settings are still grayed out. And by default, the pixel brightness was 90 and the gamma is 2.2. I changed it to 100 and I'm gonna change it to BT 1886 for some more saturation. Uh, and then if we go into the color, again, we see color depth is grayed out at 55. Color temp defaults to zero. I make that warm 50. But now, because we're not actually in a game and the ALLM is not active, you do see more stuff under the clarity menu. Uh, from here, I can show you that the OLED motion, which would be black frame insertion, is still only a single toggle, and right now it's running at 120 hertz, so when I enable it, it doesn't do anything. 
However, if I change it to 60 hertz, then we can see that it will activate the black frame insertion, which will give you better motion resolution at the expense of reduced brightness and some flicker that usually after a few minutes a lot of people will get used to. So because of this, the only real use case that I personally find for it is when playing the Nintendo Switch because it doesn't have HDR and because it's 60 hertz. All right, so now I've disabled that. And now I can show you the AI brightness setting by default and SDR was actually on. Uh, so I wanted to make sure to turn that off. And then quickly I'll show under the OLED panel care, the screen move setting does actually move by a noticeable amount. And then the logo brightness I have off. Some people like to have it on, but it's just going to depend on how much you're gaming at what brightness level, what you're playing, what the HUD levels look like and all that kind of stuff. But I keep it off. I vary my content. So now going back to the game optimizer, this dark room mode, you can set it to level one, level two, or off, and it will just automatically darken what you're playing when you're in a dark room. Okay, so now I'm gonna load up an actual game so that it's fully in ALM mode. I'm gonna go to advanced settings. We're gonna go through again, everything still grayed out. And this is with the Xbox connected direct to the TV, not going through the receiver. However, going through the receiver, it also is like this. So the first thing I wanted to test was if I turn off ALM, will that restore the settings? So under the game optimizer, I toggle it there, made another pass through all the settings. They're still grayed out, didn't seem to change anything. So then on the Xbox, I went to see if it was actually off, and it is. You see it's now no longer selectable. Uh, so disabling the ALM did not fix the settings being grayed out. So at this point, I was just trying anything I could to see if I could get stuff to no longer be grayed out. I tried 60 hertz, I tried turning off the FreeSync, the VRR, uh, everything is still grayed out. OLED Motion will come back when you turn off VRR, however, but that's the only one. And that's because the BFI will not work with VRR, so if you are trying to use BFI and it's not available, that is why. Now, the other option that was added this year Instead of having to go in and change your input label to PC for 444, you can now go to external devices, HDMI settings, and get 444 pass-through. So I wanted to check that out as well. So now going back through the settings, going to Game Optimizer, see it's all the same. You still have access to VRR and everything there. Going through all of the other settings, we can see it's defaulting to 16 by 9 and then everything else is pretty much the same except all of the clarity menu is now grayed out and fine-tuned color was grayed out. Now, this is the interesting part. You can bypass most of the grayed out settings by going into the game optimizer and changing it here. You can see if I change the contrast from within the game optimizer, it's obviously having an effect. So why is it grayed out in the advanced menu? I don't know. I'm gonna guess it's a bug. Either it's bugged where it shouldn't be working from the game optimizer, and it is, or it's bugged in that it's grayed out under the advanced menu, and it shouldn't be. Even the color, you can change it all the way down, you see the color disappearing. So even though those settings under advanced menu is grayed out, you can still adjust them through the game optimizer. So when you've seen other videos showing that a lot of the settings got disabled this year in game mode, or with 444, that's not really correct as you can still adjust them through the game optimizer and at this point it just seems to be a UI bug with the advanced settings menu would be my guess and I imagine this will be fixed if not the next update relatively soon. At least when you consider LG's track record of fixing stuff like this pretty quickly. So now I show even with 444 disabled you can still just go into the game optimizer, change your settings if you want to there and it does work. All right, now we can get back on track. So within games that have sliders, uh, so this is Destiny 2, uh, it has a midpoint setting, which there isn't really a right or wrong answer exactly. I find 40 works for OLEDs, but the brightness or nit slider in this works well, so I set that to 1500. If you hit the green button a bunch of times, you can see the VRR menu is still here. Um, nothing gone about that. And now this is one of the issues with LG TVs or a lot of TVs in general when gaming uh, the posterization in the sky. So if you look closely, it doesn't show up in video as well as it does by eye, but you can see those color bands in the sky that are moving around. That is 
there in 60 hertz, but much more prevalent at 120 hertz. You can really see it there, like the waves in the sky. That should not be there. So on Sony, for example, the smooth gradation feature actually works in game mode, and you can set it to low, and it'll get rid of that. Then on LG, when you don't have the ALLM working, it will show a smooth gradation feature, letting you toggle it, but it doesn't actually do anything. And then on Samsung, it depends on the processor and the model of the TV, but there's no actual control for it. Some of them are just better than others as far as this goes. So this is one of the things that I wish LG would allow working smooth gradation in game mode, but as of now, they do not. Now for the last part of this video to talk about game dimming. So here's a scene from The Outer Worlds where I let this sit where it was spinning the camera for about 10 minutes, and then you can see on the top where I hit the home and I come back. This game does have dynamic weather, so you are going to see a difference in brightness in most of the environment here. However, if you look like at the helmet or the lights on the ground, you can see there really wasn't too much noticeable change. So then I switched over to The Witcher, and I did this for you know about 8 minutes, and then turn the display off and back on and now at the top and bottom you can see the bottom was before turning it off and the top is after turning it off here you can actually see in the like the red health bar especially there is a little bit of a notable difference there in the brightness I would say it's maybe around 10 percent so this is GSR essentially at work by causing a slight reduction in the brightness of the entire image when it detected those static elements now here in Fortnite this is a lot of static elements, but it's an SDR. And I think because there is no peak brightness setting here, I did not see any notable difference in SDR gaming. So even after 10 minutes, it looked just about the same as before. So I think not having that peak brightness setting, they're able to keep the brightness consistent. And then that raises my question of, if it's only gonna lower five, maybe 10%, why even do it in the first place? It really is a dimming to me that just doesn't make sense because it doesn't seem like it's enough to really make any long-term difference as far as protecting the panel. And at the same time, they could have also just made it where the brightness to start with wasn't that little tiny bit more and just kept it consistent. It just, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Why have that? And again, the GSR setting is in a service menu. They've just changed how to get to it. But for the most part, no one's going to be able to disable it. So I just wanted to test it as it is. And considering it's not really detectable by eye with how it dims so slowly in such a small amount, I'd say it's a non-issue. However, I also just don't think it should be there doing it in the first place. But that's going to be it. I thank you all for watching. I hope this helps you out, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Thanks.